First question says, Assalamu alaikum. Do the Dhuhr and Asr prayers have to be read silently when praying alone? I do not live near a masjid, so I pray most of my fard alone. For all salah, I read fairly loudly, a loud whisper, so that I can hear what I am reciting. Reciting aloud like this enables me to focus and pray with khushu because it allows me to focus on the words, think about them, and be affected by them. Is it okay for me to pray dhuhr and asr like this? If I pray silently, I cannot focus, pray with khushu because my mind wanders and becomes clouded with other things. I feel like my prayer becomes empty and just motions. Please help clarify. Jazakallahu khaira. Wa alaykum as salam wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Indeed, in the Messenger of Allah, you have a fine example. Allah tells us. In the Messenger of Allah, you have a fine example. In other words, the finest example. The best example. The Prophet ﷺ was the greatest musalli. He was the biggest, greatest person to make salah. Period. So how he made salah, what he did and what he didn't do, is more than enough for you. There wasn't a person who prayed to Allah Azza wa with greater khushu than him. So anything that he did, recited, silently, aloud, he raised his hand. So no one can say, you're raising your hands too much. You're about to fly in the prayer. As it's narrated, that one of the imams said, لَقَدْ كِتَّ أَنْ تَطِيرُ You're about to fly away in the salah. Whatever the Prophet ﷺ did is the ultimate manifestation of khushu, period. So what did the Prophet said do in the silent prayers? And what did he do in the audible prayers? What did he tell us and what did he allow us? And I can't just do it. That is what you should do. So you have to fight yourself to be submissive to the Sunnah. You have to fight yourself to be submissive to how Muhammad said something did it. If it's difficult in the beginning, if it's problemsome, problem some, burdensome in the beginning, you have to fight yourself until Allah Azza wa gives you the coolness in your heart. So it's not an option, it's not a choice. The general rule of following Muhammad Sallallahu way. As far as the specific technical fiqh ruling of reciting Allah or silently, then the ulama of Islam say, reading Salat al-Maghrib, the first two rakah aloud, reading Salat al-Dhuhr, all four rakah silently, they said it's recommended. It's recommended. It's from the recommended acts of the prayer. It's not necessarily mandatory or haram to do the opposite. But it's against the sunnah to continue to do it and practice it like that. Salat after salat, every single day you recite dhuhr out loud. That's going to become problematic without a doubt. And it's going to lead to you scorning and disdaining the sunnah. There's no doubt about that. What leads to khushur? Try your best to do it in the way in which Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Muhammad, the Prophet Muhammad did it. And that's the best khushur. As far as if you had to do it from time to time, what's one thing? That's one thing. But it's unnecessary for you to intentionally go against the guidance of Muhammad with the claim, I feel better, I feel closer. Once you open up that door, there's a door open up to all havoc and chaos. I feel close to Allah when I do it like this. That's why Bid'ah was made. It's the intention of innovation. It's for a person to get to Allah closer, faster, and more powerfully. And that's incorrect. Everybody understand this? Allah Azza wa Jalla, He tells us in the Quran al that Ibrahim alayhi salatu salam, He made dua to him. Allah says, Abraham said, give me a, a truthful statement, a truthful tongue. Huh? And he made dua to Allah Azza wa Jal to forgive him of his sins, to forgive him of his father who was ignorant, who didn't know, who was astray. Don't disgrace me on the day in which your slaves are resurrected. Do not disgrace me on the day in which your slaves will be resurrected. A day in which wealth won't avail, children can't help out. Illa, except for one, atallaha bi qalbin salim, who comes to Allah Azza with a sound heart, a secure heart, a pure, wholesome heart. And some of the ulama of Islam they say al qalb al salim, qalb al mu'min, li'anna qalb al kafiri wal munafiq maridun, wa minhu man qal huwa al qalb al mutmain ila sunnah, al khali min al bid'ah. It's the heart that feels secure with Allah and feels safe and sound and is okay with the sunnah and not with bid'ah. So if you can't find comfort in how Muhammad did it, something's wrong with your iman. Period. Wallahu alam.